Welcome to the PadNet TV 2014 Election Forums. In this show, we will focus on the candidates that are campaigning for Council District 1. Long Beach is the fifth largest city in California and the 36th largest city in the United States. As a major city with international, economic, and cultural influence, leadership at every level is important in our community. The first council district includes one of the largest ports in our nation, some of the most densely populated neighborhoods in our city, downtown shopping, schools, parks, and cultural points of interest. With such important responsibilities in mind, we would like to introduce to you leaders in our community that believe they are the best qualified to be the District 1 Council Member in 2014. And they are Jason Alla is a community organizer specializing in political action skills. Allo has served as a president of the Long Beach State College Republicans and political director of the Long Beach Young Republicans. He currently serves as the executive director of Long Beach Normal. Lena Gonzalez currently serves as the district deputy to Vice Mayor Robert Garcia in the first council district. Gonzalez was a winner of the Long Beach Post 40 Under 40 Award this year. After being nominated for her public service by first district community leaders. Pastor Misi Tagaloa. Pastor Misi is the senior minister at Second Samoan Congregational Church of Long Beach. He's the United Church of Christ. Tagaloa holds both engineering and advanced business degrees, as well as a PhD in practical theology. Tagaloa also founded the Tafe Sea Lafaya Festival. Pilar Pinnell is the founder of Embracing Latina Leadership Alliances. Pinnell was the recipient of the 2005 United States House of Representatives Special Congressional Recognition Award, Outstanding and Invaluable Service to the Community. And we have Ricardo Linares, who has lived in the District 1 for almost 30 years. After his service in the U.S. Marines, Linares was a member of Redevelopment Central Project Area Committee. He is currently the Senior Field Deputy for Long Beach City Council Member Stephen Neal. As we come back to the set, it's important for us to now uh, talk with our guest and let them share with you several different questions that we've uh, shared with them prior to going live with you this evening. The first question, and we want to start with Ricardo, and I will say welcome again to you all, is uh, talking about vision. As council member for the first district and in any leadership position, vision is important. Share with our viewers what your vision would be, Ricardo, if you were to be elected as a council member for the first district. Well. Uh, first of all, hello, Derek. Thank sure. you for uh, hosting this uh, candidates forum, sure, my um, and especially because it is important to keep the residents informed. And as far as the vision, um, my administration will uh, focus on a simple vision statement, and that's to build uh, and maintain safe and beautiful neighborhoods for all families, while growing our economy by providing uh, help for for businesses while they provide uh, jobs for our residents here in the first district and the city of Long Beach. Okay, and uh, we all know um, jobs are important and business is important. And as we move on to you, Lena, uh, what else would you say uh, as a vision for uh, the first district from your perspective? Well, I believe that a vision for the first district, since I've been in the uh, community for over five years now, living um, in the community but working alongside a lot of the residents. I believe the vision will be a leadership that will work and continue to work alongside the residents of the first district, the business owners, the stakeholders. I've um, you know, personally represented artists you know, in the East Village, uh, West Side industrial business owners, the downtown businesses and residences, and collaborat collaboratively we've worked together to make sure that capital improvement projects are moving forward, that public safety is at the forefront, and that you know business and technology is also important in in the first district. Uh, my leadership skill will continue to you know work alongside the residents in that sense. Very comprehensive. 
and Misi, when you listen to what's been said and you reflect on what you've thought about as you've gone into this candidacy, what is your vision for the first district? Yeah, so I, I want to echo some of the comments made by Lynn Harris and, and Gonzalez, and, but, but I think it requires a little bit more. You know, there's something unique about our district. I mean, the diversity, both economically, culturally, and socially. And, and I think we need someone to bring all of these eclectic communities together. Mm -hmm. And the closest thing I can come to is, is a, my vision for the district would be a place where we can call home. So many folks, 60,000 in the district, but very few participate in government. I mean, there has to be something wrong with that. Mm -hmm. and, and my vision for the district and then for the city is one that includes everybody not just a few. And when I hear you say that, I'll stay with you for a moment, Misi, and, and, and I'll let the others. Uh, I think uh, we often find ourselves with very low voter turnout, not necessarily just in the first district, uh, but in all districts. And um, what would you say to those who are out there about the importance of, of voting? One of the, and I ask that because one of the reasons that we decided to have these forums was I, I read in one of our local newspapers that this is anticipated to be one of the most dynamic uh, elections in the history of Long Beach, and you guys are a part of that history. So what would, what would you say to the voters out there about the importance of them actually getting out there, regardless of their candidate, to vote? Uh, from your perspective, Misi, why is that important for them to do that? It's important. I mean, that's part of our democracy. Right. Um, I think the voters have not really find something, found anything exciting about mm -hmm. about voting. You know, mm -hmm. I walk quite a bit and I talk to folks and they're saying, look, my vote doesn't matter. Right. Or they had just moved in from other places and they've forgotten to register to vote. Mm -hmm. So it's that sort of thing. So, so I think uh, that's why I think vision is very important. We need a leader that we can believe in, mm -hmm. someone that we can rally around, um, and just to get folks excited. Oh. Oh, and not to cut you yeah. short, but Lena, I want to make sure that I get you and Ricardo's perspective on that as well, because uh, I just think that voter turnout, regardless of how great you guys are, someone has to be there casting those ballots. So what would you say to the people that are watching about the importance from your perspective? Absolutely. The voter universe is very small, and I think that I've shared with uh, a lot of the constituents that I currently work for in the first district is that if you don't like what's going on in the district, you need to raise your voice, whether it's um, for me or for anyone else. You need to be out there in the ballot box mm -hmm. and, and making um, your statement heard. And so um, working in the first district, it's, it's, we have a, a unique dynamic because we have a lot of folks who, um, you know, we have some low income, middle income, seniors who are very low income. Sometimes it's hard to get to the polls. Um, so it's difficult for them, not just that they don't want to participate, they don't mm -hmm. have the means to participate as well. I mm -hmm. think that's something to note. Um, but I hope with this, you know, new um, election and the um, exciting features that, you know, come mm -hmm. to be in 2014 that we'll have uh, more of a turnout. I look okay, forward to Ricardo, that. Ricardo, from your perspective, uh, what would you say to that, that gentleman or that lady that's watching and why they should make sure, regardless of their candidate, they need to be there? Well, Derek, you're right about 2014. It's going to be an exciting year. Uh, we're going to be changing leaders from the mayor to five different council members. Mm -hmm. And for me personally, I've, you know, for the last 10 years, it's been a grassroots effort. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been involved in the first district, in the sixth district, in the seventh district, in the ninth district. And it all comes down to who participate at the, uh, at the ballot box. Mm -hmm. And we need to give them a reason, and I believe the reason is standing, you know, sitting before us mm -hmm. or before your viewers. Mm -hmm. uh, but to to add one more thing to that is that we need to encourage more residents. You know, for the last four years, I've worked to to train and develop residents to form new associations, mm -hmm. so that they can become more informed of what's going on at City Hall and in the neighborhoods, so that when they go to the ballot, they make mm -hmm. an informed decision. And I will encourage that right. as a council member, and I will hire staff to do the same thing. Now, before we go to our first break, we just have a couple of minutes. So in a couple of words, <laughs> when you think about what has been done that's great in the first district by the, the current uh, council member, 
What would be a couple of words that you would say are the priorities for the first district as you see it? Let's start with you, just a few words. Uh, as far as the priorities, yes. um, you know, being in the community for, over, for almost close to 30 years um, and actually living through it, uh, I say public safety is the number one concern. The second one is giving the families an opportunity to find a job. Once we give them an opportunity to find a job, I think everything else is going to fall into place. Public safety and jobs. Yes. I think what's been positive in the district is uh, the creativity, our growth, and our progress. We've mm -hmm. done that. We're not the first district from before four and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. We've worked really hard with our community members to progress our, our district and, 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 and push the initiatives that need to be um, you know, at the forefront of, of our city. Okay. And Misi, what would you say in a few words are those priorities that you would like to tackle on you if you were to be elected? I think affordable housing is a huge issue. Um, it's forcing people to take on two or three jobs mm -hmm. just to make ends meet, put roof over their head, food on the table. Mm -hmm. And uh, because you're spending a lot of time outside the homes, a lot of other problems, mm -hmm. you know, well, come with it. I think that those things are important. And the one thing that we want you, as you watch this show live or as you look at video on demand in the days and, and weeks to come, is to understand that working those two or three jobs to, to make one household uh, uh, be self-sufficient or um, getting out there and finding uh, employment that's important in our community or the arts are all things that from a leadership perspective uh, these ladies and gentlemen have talked about and things that we want you to think about as you ask the right questions and get engaged. So when we come back we'll get uh, our guest perspective on how they will address things from a citywide perspective as well. Stay tuned. Hi, my name's Lisa Mastromico, and I'm the director for PadNet, the Public Access Digital Network. PadNet is the community television station here in Long Beach where we have all the media training and resources that you need to create content for our website and for our channel. If you're interested in field production, we can teach you everything from pre-production all the way through post. If you're interested in the studio, we just finished building a brand new HD studio that's available to our members who are trained and certified to use it. Our studio series will teach you everything from running the cameras, the soundboard, creating graphics, even how to direct your own studio program. The first thing to get started is to become a member, and any Long Beach resident or organization or business based in Long Beach is eligible. Remember, PadNet is here for us to create programming by and for the people of Long Beach. Check us out today at padnet.tv to find out how to get started. Hi, my name is Marissa Semenci and I'm the Energy, Advocacy and Family Services Director at Long Beach CAP. I oversee two departments. The Community Advocacy and Family Services Department provides funding to local nonprofits to enhance their programmatic services. We also have the ELITE program, which is the Eastern Los Angeles Energy Assistance Team, in which we provide basic weatherization and utility assistance. For more information, please visit lbcap.org. Thank you. Hello, my name is Aldina Frizzell with Soul Love Magazine, and you're watching PadNet TV, your shows, your community, and your station. Welcome back to PadNet TV's Political Forums. I'm Derek Simpson, Executive Director of the Long Beach Community Action Partnership, and I have the great honor of sitting here with leaders in our community uh, that would like for you to consider uh, voting for them as they run for the first council district uh, council member in 2014. When we left, we were talking about priorities within the district, but to be a member of the city council, you also have to work in collaboration with the council members representing other districts throughout the city, along with the mayor. And so my next question, and we're gonna start with Lena on this one, is to talk about if they were elected council person for first district, 
what would be the one priority that they would like to work in collaboration with the other council members to address on behalf of the city of Long Beach? And Lena, with that question in mind, uh, what would you like to see as one of those first things that you would like to address with your uh, colleagues on Absolutely. the council? It would certainly be um, business and development. I think with so much going on right now with the city, with our civic center, um, the Shoemaker Bridge in the first district is another opportunity uh, for development among many others. I think uh, working with our council colleagues to make sure that the projects are mindful, that they're projects that will hire local and be mindful of, of good wages and good jobs for our local economy is very important. Um, working, you know, not in silos, but working together with our, our, our neighboring districts and citywide would be very important to do that, absolutely. Now, Ricardo, and thank you, Lena. And Ricardo, she mentioned not working in silos. And I know, mm -hmm. you know, when we talk about the council, ideally we're talking about serving a greater good right. uh, for the entire city of Long Beach. Uh, what would you see as some of those priorities if you were to be the first district council person? Well, as council member, I know my decisions are gonna impact the city as a whole. And having worked for two different council members, and done a lot of work in the first and in the sixth mm -hmm. district, I believe um, I'll be able to work with all the council members and the mayor, whoever it is, mm -hmm. um, to bring in more jobs, whether it's through our local businesses, through the ports of Long Beach and ports of LA, mm -hmm. um, and through the Chamber of Commerce. I believe once we give families an opportunity to find a, not just a job, but a career, I think we'll be able to solve all the other, all the other problems like public safety, mm -hmm. our infrastructure, and uh, our environment. Right. And Misi, from your perspective, uh, you know, knowing that you work in faith-based communities and nonprofits and you understand collaboration, collaboration is going to be key if you're elected a city council person. What do you see as that priority that you would address? There are certain things that we have to come together right as a city mm -hmm. you know and, and and i think with those things we need the all hands on deck approach right. and and we shouldn't you know use that um sparingly i oh, wish mm -hmm. i'm very clear that if i were to make it on the council i need four other p folks to support anything that i put together right and i think that's why leadership is important Mm -hmm. someone who can speak to each person's self-interest mm -hmm. and someone who's got leadership enough to listen to others and and I think that's where I would make a contribution on the council mm -hmm. not someone who has a lot of administrative background but someone who can really lead our city into a vision that includes mm -hmm. everybody and not just a few it's, it's good that you, you talk about including everybody because my next question is really relevant to the inclusion of the entire community. We talk about Long Beach being one of the most diverse cities of its size in the United States. Uh, we talk about valuing diversity and embracing everyone. The first district covers a pretty diverse, you, you've got the, the million dollar condos, you know, to, you know, people who live uh, within poverty. And mm -hmm. as the executive director of Long Beach Community Action Partnership, our mission is to help those who are in poverty achieve self-sufficiency. So for all of those who are listening, regardless of their socioeconomic status, how can they feel comfortable that regardless of where they sit in this city, that you're going to represent their interests and it's not going to be just a special interest. And Misi, I will uh, start with you again, uh, relevant to that particular question. From where I serve, the basic unit of organization is family. Right? Even though I'm Samoan, we've opened our church building up to other ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. We have an African American community that worships there and we also have a, a, a Catholic a Spanish group that worships there. So. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to formulate policy in the public square that sort of like encapsulates and lifts that up, mm -hmm. right? I've always done this throughout my career. I've always been inclusive, been sensitive to other people. Mm -hmm. And I think with the mandate of the people in the first district, I'll be able to take that model and expand it for the city. Okay. Well, as a, you know, in my current role as a field deputy for the first district, um, I have represented those interests, various interests. Mm -hmm. um, it's been from, you know, business owners to artists. We have a very large creative class. It's really important to push arts initiatives for them. We have many children and families in the district. I'm a mother, I understand that. 
Um, and so it's been um, it's been not a challenge. It's actually been great working with all of these yeah. these um, interests wow. and understanding their needs and making sure that they're civically engaged. Um, that if they have a vision for the district, let's talk about it and push your ideas to make sure that you get with the right city department to make it happen. Um, mm -hmm. So it's been a pleasure working with the community over five years. All right. Ricardo. Well, you talk about diversity, mm -hmm. and I believe uh, I can represent the first district because I've lived that diversity. Mm -hmm. I grew up poor, you know, with a single mom until my stepdad came and mm -hmm. took care of us mm -hmm. um, in the first district. I've gone to school there and uh, went to the Marine Corps, served eight years and came back and um, tried running a small business. I've worked with at-risk youth in a nonprofit and now for the last uh, almost five years I worked for two council members uh, in the city of Long Beach. So I represent that diversity. I will represent that diversity on the council mm -hmm. and my decision because I lived through it will be uh, you know, I know it will affect el other other families, especially in the first district. I mean, you're right. We have uh, people with high income, people with low income, and I'm glad to say that I'm in the middle income. And you know, but I won't forget the past because mm -hmm. you know, if we forget where we come from, we can't see where we're going in the future. So, uh, mm -hmm. I would love to work with organizations like Long Beach CAP, Habitat mm -hmm. for Humanities, so that we can provide services to all other families mm -hmm. in the first district and the city. Right. Uh, we, we have a few minutes left, and I want to make sure that uh, we kind of wrap up some closing thoughts along with giving the viewers um, that perspective as to why you feel that you are the best candidates to take the baton from the current leadership in the first district and uh, build on that success going to the next level. And uh, let's start in the middle sure. <laughs> with, with you, Lena. Uh, as, as succinctly as you might be able to uh, share why you are the best candidate for the first district and, and your closing thoughts. Sure, I'm a Cal State Long Beach graduate. I'm a product of uh, parents who went to school here in Long Beach and in San Pedro. Um, I'm, a I'm a mother. I worked in the district for five years. I understand the challenges. I know the, the the potential that we have. Mm -hmm. I know the direction we're headed, but I've led that direction and I feel like it's a good direction. Um, mm -hmm. I'd be happy to be the council member if elected and I know that a lot of our, uh, you know, the community is happy with uh, the way we're, we're going and that means jobs, public safety, um, supporting our low-income seniors, mm -hmm. affordable housing, whatever it might be, you know, we've, we've certainly um, pushed those efforts and made it happen, so. Right, thank you. And Ricardo, from your perspective. Well, I want to say to your viewers that um, I believe I'm the best candidate because I grew up in the district, in the, f uh, in the first district, and that's where I grew up. I attended schools, uh, and I'm proud to say that I'm raising my family there in the same neighborhood where I grew up. I spent eight years in the Marine Corps. Uh, I spent another four years uh, representing the first district as a city commissioner. I've served on the Central Project Area Committee. And for the last five years, I've worked for two council members as a field deputy. So I have the experience of tending to the needs of the residents, plus the experience of dealing with the workings of City Hall. So I'm very excited to uh, share that experience and my leadership uh, to lead the first district into the future. And I hope to do that in 2014. So mm -hmm. you can visit my website, ricardolinares.com. I look forward to hearing from the from your viewers and the residents of the first district about the future of the first district. Right. Thank you. And Misi. Yep. So I'll let the voters of the first district decide who the best candidate is for the mm -hmm. uh, for the position. But but like I say, we have a real unique district that requires a unique leader, and um, so I went to Claremont for a few years and. I'm an ordained minister of the United Church of Christ. I've lived in Long Beach for over 30 years and served the Second Samoan Congregational Church for the last 20. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a lot of council folks go through that district, and um, I'd like to serve them. Right. That's why I'm running for city council. We don't have the website up just yet, but we do have a Facebook page. Right. Yeah, so thank you for well, having Well, thanks us. to all of you. Uh, it was important to us as 
an agency in this community that serves uh, to speak with people who desire to serve in a grander way. And I congratulate you for stepping out there uh, because I know it'll be with uh, some sacrifice that you go through these next few months and uh, wish you all the best as you endeavor uh, to, to serve a greater good in, in the city of Long Beach. Uh, this has been an important uh, opportunity for us to share with you in our community uh, leadership, uh, different candidates, but very unique uh, perspectives on how they may serve. But you heard some commonalities that we all need to consider as we talk about making our city that's already great uh, even better in, in so many areas. We want to thank our guest for sharing their vision for Council District 1 and thank you for watching. If you have feedback about today's show, would like to access it as video on demand, or want to know more about PadNet, the People's Channel, you can find everything you need to know on padnet.tv. And you can keep up to date with the latest PadNet news by liking us on Facebook and following us on Twitter. Thanks again for watching and to our crew here at PadNet for another great production. Until the next time, we encourage you to stay informed and stay engaged. Goodbye.